Hello, sports fans, and especially White Sox fans. I, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and I'm your host right now for White Sox Week in Review. Now, if you've been following the White Sox, and I have, they've had a very good week this past week. They went five and one. They won two of three from Boston. They they beat Cleveland once, but had one game either rained or snowed or something out, and then they um, and then they took two from Texas. So, good week for uh, for our Sox. Um, I was told by a friend of mine, Chris Dufour, who we will mention again, and who has been on the channel a few times that um, I should be doing the games backwards from the most current game back into the future to the first game of the week instead of as I was doing it starting with the first game of the week and working my way through the week so we are pretty much going to do that I will start with the latest game talking about the latest game and then I will work my way back to the Boston series now I went in depth in the Boston series so we're gonna start at the start of the Boston series when we get to it and we're gonna do those games one two and three two of those as you might remember were a doubleheader that was played on Sunday and then they played the third game on Monday which was Patriots Day so um, all of that might be jogging your memory so anyway we're going to talk about all of that and get to it but first we're going to start with last night's game saturday night april 24th's game and this matchup was uh kyle gibson going up against keigel and uh the uh, white Sox uh won this game i think what was the score on that one two to one yeah, two to one, and I and I believe we won it. I think the decider was uh, Moncada coming home on a wild pitch. In fact, you go down the um, box score for the White Sox for this game. Nobody has an RBI. Nobody has an official RBI, but they scored two runs. So um, in this game, let's see here. Texas for Texas, Nick Solak was two for four. Joey Gallo was two for four. Nick Lowe was two for four. And Calhoun was two for four with an RBI. For the Chicago White Sox, the notable performances were Moncada, three for four. Mercedes, our man Mercedes, one for three. Andrew Vaughn, one for two. Gibson pitched six innings, allowed six hits, and one earned run. So he pitched well. And Keuchel pitched six innings, allowed seven hits, and no earned runs. Hendricks got the win in relief um, with one inning pitched, one hit, and one earned run. So, um, and for the uh, and for the Texas Rangers, the loss went to John King in relief. He pitched two and two thirds innings, allowed three hits, and one earned run. And this. Uh, the, the game before this was the April 23rd game against the Texas Rangers, the very same Texas Rangers. And that game was vastly different than this one. This one was 2-1. to one. The first game of the series against Texas, though, Chicago won 9-7. to For Texas... Um, Isaiah Connor Falefa was three for five with an RBI. Garcia was two for five with two homers and four RBIs. Nick Solak was one for five with a home run and an RBI. And David Dahl was one for one. For Chicago, Tim Anderson was two for five. Eaton was one for five with two RBIs. Moncada was three for five with a home run and three RBIs. Lewis Robert was two for five. Uh, Mercedes was four for four with three RBIs. Mercedes, man, how did this guy escape everyone's radar for 10 years in the minor leagues? I want to know. Vaughn was two for four, and Madrigal was two for four with an RBI. For Texas, now this pitching matchup was interesting because it was Dunning going up against Cease. And Dunning, you remember, we had Dunning. 
but we traded him to get Lynn. Well, we also beat up on Dunning. He went two and two-thirds, allowed eight hits, two walks, and five earned runs. But the loss ended up going to um, Kyle Cody, who pitched three innings, pit, uh, three innings, uh, four hits allowed, and three earned runs. For us, Cease, again, has failed to get to the fifth inning. All of his starts this year, Cease has failed to get to the fifth inning. He went three and a third, three hits allowed, five strikeouts, and two earned runs. And Hoyer ended up getting the win. He went an inning and a third, allowed two hits and no earned runs. And Hendricks got the save. So we, uh, Hendricks is, is coming around, but he's still not really Hendrix. And we, we need to see the real Hendrix. We need to see the Hendrix of last year is what we really need to see. So, April 21st, uh, there was no game. April 22nd, there was also no game. Those two days, no game. Um, one of them was a, um, I think the 22nd was a scheduled day off. And the 21st was um, the one that got uh, weathered out. So that brings us to April 20th versus Cleveland. This was uh, Rodon versus Playsack again. If you remember that Playsack had a no-hitter um, recently, fairly recently, that was against the Indians, and I believe he was going up against Playsack that game as well. So, uh, for the Sox in this game, because um, we were in Cleveland for this one, for the Sox, Abreu was 3-for-4, two homers and three RBIs. Lewis Robert was 3-for-4. Grandall was one for four with a homer and an RBI. And Rodon pitched five innings, allowed three hits, five walks, and only one earned run, and ended up getting the win. Hendricks got the save with a third of an inning and zero earned runs. For the Indians, uh, Franmil Reyes was three for four with an RBI, and Luplo was one for two with uh, one homer and one RBI. And uh, uh, Playsack went five innings, allowed seven hits for the Indians and six earned runs, and he ended up getting the loss in that game. So this all brings us to the Boston series. And as I said, I'm going to start at the beginning of the Boston series. Uh, we came into this week six and eight, by the way, so very bad um, well, I don't want to say very bad, but not good. Certainly not good. <clears throat> Coming into the week six and eight when you're supposed to win the division, or at least be contending to win the division. So anyway, uh, the first game of the doubleheader on Sunday the 18th, um, top of the first, the White Sox scored um, on a Tim Anderson home run, and it was one nothing. Then at the top of the fourth, the White Sox scored once and made it 2-0 when Grandall doubled Abreu home. Then in the bottom of the fourth, the Red Sox score on a bad hop grounder to third base with runners at the corners, and it's 2-1 White Sox at this point. Top of the fifth, Lamb singled. Lurie Garcia was out trying to bunt. Tim Anderson singles off of Houck's leg. Runners at the corners, one out. Hauk is relieved by Josh Taylor at this point, and Eaton got out, and then Moncada singled Lamb home, and it's 3-1 White Sox. Bottom of the sixth, Kike Hernandez homers around Pesky's pole, and it's 3-2 White Sox. I mean, that thing just barely was a home run, and it's very close to home plate, if you've ever seen Pesky's pole in Boston. Uh, Bummer relieves Keuchel. Verdugo singles, J.D. Martinez grounds to third into a double play, and Bogarts is struck out to end the threat. Bottom of the seventh, Hendricks is on to pitch. He nails it down. The Sox win 3-2, and they go to 7-8 and eight at this point. Now we go to the April 18th second game of the doubleheader. And uh, at this point, obviously, we come in 7-8, and eight, having just won. 
And this matchup was Kopech versus Martin Perez. Top of the first, Madrigal singles, Lewis Roberts singles, Moncada singled and the bases were loaded with no outs. Abreu grounded into a fielder's choice and it's 1-0 White Sox. Mercedes struck out, but then Lurie Garcia flew out and it was and it stayed 1-0 White Sox after the first. Top of the third, Lewis Robert doubled on a 0-2 count with one out. Robert advanced to third on a wild pitch. Moncada was hit by a pitch, and then runners were at first and third with one out. And Abreu hit into a double play, still 1-0 White Sox. Top of the fourth, Mercedes hit a leadoff home run. There's our man Mercedes again. It's 2-0 White Sox at that point. Garcia on with an infield single. Vaughn bounced out to third base, and Garcia went to second. One out. Collins struck out. Then there was two outs. Mendick singled Garcia home, and it's 3-0 White Sox. Vasquez tried to pick Mendick off first, but uh, threw it away, and Mendick went to second. Madrigal singled Mendick home, and it's 4 nothing White Sox. Madrigal to second on the throw home. Bottom of the fourth, Kopech walked the leadoff hitter. Verdugo singled. Runners are at first and second. Kopech is relieved by Matt Foster at this point. J.D. Martinez singled home a run, and it's 4 nothing White Sox. Or 4 one White Sox. Bogarts flew out deep to center, one out. Devers fouled out to third base, two out. And then Marwin Gonzalez popped out, and it ended at 4-1, White Sox after four. Top of the fifth, Moncada gets a leadoff walk. Abreu hits into a double play, and Mercedes struck out. Still 4-1, White Sox after five. Top of the sixth, Lurie Garcia got an infield single. Vaughn doubles, runners at second and third. Zach Collins walked. The bases are loaded with no outs. Mendick flew out shallow to left. No advance. Madrigal got a sack fly to right. And it was 5-1 White Sox. And then Lewis Robert flew out. One thing you're going to notice, at least that I noticed here, is we are failing to capitalize in key situations when we have a lot of guys on base. We have to get more of these guys home. You have bases loaded with no outs. You got to get like three runs out of that. You, you can't get one. That's really not good. So the White Sox won 5-1, and at this point went to 8-8. Eight eight. Now this took us to the Patriots Day game, which really did not go so well for us, to say the least. This was Giolito versus Ivaldi, and Giolito exited in the second inning. He had nothing. They were hitting him silly. So anyway, top of the first, T.A. TA singled up the middle and stole second base on an Adam Eaton strikeout. And then Lewis Robert doubled T.A. home, and it was 1-0 White Sox. You were thinking, okay, here we go again. We're going to win another one against Boston. Abreu grounded out to the pitcher with no advance, and Grandall flew out. And also, I want to say going into this game that um, my buddy Chris Dufour, who I mentioned at the start of the video, who I, as I also mentioned, has been on several episodes of my uh, channel videos, uh, he's a big Boston Red Sox fan, lives up in Massachusetts, and he predicted before the game started that the Red Sox would win 8-4. Now, they actually ended up, I believe, winning 11-4. to 4? I want to say it was 11-4. to 4. Yes, it was. 11-4 to 4 is what they ended up winning. So he was very close. Anyway, we go to the bottom of the first. And this is where everything started to fall apart. And it was only the first inning. Kike Hernandez homered to left and tied it at one immediately. Verdugo singled against the shift past shortstop. J.D. Martinez singled to right field, runners at the corners. Devers singled to run home, and it's 2-1 Red Sox, runners at second and third. Vasquez laid down a bunt single to third base, and the bases were loaded. Marwin Gonzalez singled another run home, and it was 3-1 Red Sox. Notice that the Red Sox are actually capitalizing on this runner on base thing, which is why they're winning the East right now. Uh, Renfro grounded out to third 
with an RBI and it's 4-1 Red Sox. Franchi Cordero singled to left field and Lurie Garcia misplayed the ball. Two runs scored and it's 6-1 Red Sox. Dahlbeck walked and the runners were at first and second after that walk. Kike Hernandez popped out for the second out and then Verdugo flew out. Bottom of the second, J.D. Martinez hit a leadoff home run, and now it's 7-1 to one Red Sox. Devers walked, and then Giolito was taken out in favor of Zach Birdie. So Zach Birdie comes in, and he was only, I think he was only on the roster because um, at the time, Lance Lynn was out with an injury. Vasquez singled, and runners are at the corners, no outs. Marwin Gonzalez strikes out, Renfro flew out, but got his second RBI on that, and it's 8-1 Red Sox. Cordero struck out, and it's 8-1 Red Sox after two. Top of the third, Madrigal um, stand-up leadoff triple. Then T.A. struck out, Eaton doubled down the line and got uh, Madrigal home, and it's 8-2. Lewis Robert lined to first, two out, and Abreu struck out. Again, we had a man at second base, and we stranded him. I mean, not that it would have mattered in this particular game, but that's the kind of thing you got to capitalize on. Bottom of the third, Verdugo homered with one out, and it was 9-2 Red Sox after three. Bottom of the fourth, the Red Sox scored another run, making it 10-2, inning ending, or the inning ended on getting Marwin Gonzalez in a rundown between third and home after Vasquez scored on a misplay on a ground ball by Abreu. Top of the fifth, T.A. doubled. Eaton doubled T.A. home, and it's 10-3 Red Sox. Cordero probably could have caught the ball up against the Green Monster, but he didn't on that particular double. Bottom of the sixth, Devers had a leadoff single. Vasquez hit into a fielder's choice, and Ruiz balked Vasquez to second base. Top of the seventh, Lurie Garcia got a leadoff infield single to shortstop. T.A. singled with runners at the corners, or that put runners at the corners. T.A. stole second after reliever Garrett Whitlock came on for Evaldi. And then Eaton grounded out, and that was an RBI, so it was 10-4 Boston at that point. Bottom of the seventh, Your mean Marce Mercedes, our man, your mean, comes in to pitch. La Russa puts him in to pitch. Now, a lot of people were critical of this move. Really, I'm not so much because I know you have to, you'd have to, um, you know, you have to preserve your bullpen. You can't just burn through your bullpen. And, um... So I'm not really so much against them putting your mean in. Now, I know people were critical because it was your mean, and he's, like, on fire. Because the next inning, in the eighth, they put Mendick in, and Mendick's a backup infielder. So, yeah, all right, maybe you wanted to maybe see it be a backup, but, you know. In general, the general concept of putting a position player into pitch, though, in a blowout, I'm not really against. So he came on to pitch. He walked Cordero, and Cordero stole second. Dahlbeck lined to short into a double play. Kike Hernandez doubled to left. Verdugo singled, and runners were at the corners. J.D. Martinez singled in a run, and it's 11-4 Boston. He walked Devers to load the bases, and then Vasquez ended the inning on a fly out to right, and it was 11-4 Boston after seven innings. And as I said in the bottom of the eighth, Mendick comes on to pitch. He hits Marwin Gonzalez with a knuckler. Renf Renfro singles on an EFIS pitch, and it was an 0 2 EFIS pitch. Franchi Cordero struck out. Dahlbeck flew to right, and then Kike Hernandez grounded out. 11 4 Boston after eight, and that's where it would end at, a, at the score of 11 4. But as I said, good week for us. Uh, we we came into the week six and eight, and we went. We ended up going five and one to go to eleven and nine on the season, which kind of mirrors my um, my White Sox imagined season, where I'm doing the, the Stratomatic White Sox from last year on the imagined set. Pretty much, 
is mirroring that season because right now the real White Sox are 11 and 9 and I believe my um, my Stratomatic Replay White Sox are uh, something like 15 and 11 and Texas was the team that spurred us to start getting better. They were part of a uh, eight game winning streak for that imagined White Sox team and so far we've taken two out of three from Texas and I think the third one is on Sunday uh, the day that I'm recording this video so that's the White Sox recap we've had a really good week and so now we're right there at the top of the division and um, hopefully we can keep it going and uh, leave some other teams in the dust because some of these other teams are not playing very well the Twins are not playing all that well uh, Detroit is not there yet um, can in Kansas City is um, well Kansas City's hanging Kansas City's hanging in there but I still don't think that they're quite up with us so that's the White Sox recap leave a comment below give me a thumbs up if you like the video as always subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed it doesn't cost you anything and it helps me a great deal but for right now that's going to be it for me sportsman z bob zolke signing off